Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here from the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we'll recap an interview that Grant McCaslin had with the Field of 68. He talked about his journey through the collegiate ranks in terms of coaching, even his time at Baylor as a player, and maybe why they weren't very good. And then he'll also talk about, well, what he thinks Texas Tech could do in 2023 to compete in the Big 12, dropping a couple of nuggets in terms of, will Texas Tech play a little faster? Potentially. Now, as always, the link to that full interview will be in the description and the comments below. So be sure to give that interview over on the Field of 68 YouTube channel a listen. There's a lot of good stuff from Grant McCaslin in it, but I wanted to give my thoughts. And let's start out with this one. The first thing that stood out to me was when Grant was talking about UNT last year and how slow they played, he had this comment. He said, Texas Tech, he said, quote, will open it up more compared to last season at UNT. And now, if you've listened to prior videos on this channel, specifically after Warren Washington has committed to the Red Raiders, I'm all for Texas Tech speeding it up a little bit. I think it would be great for the current guards that they have on the roster from Pop to Chance to Lamar. I think it would be really good for this team to speed up. And the reason being is this. I think you have enough bigs in terms of, hey, you got Washington, Lindsey, and Jennings. Now, would you like to have one more? Probably. But let's just say you don't, and you got those three guys. I think that those three guys allow you to get out and transition in terms of they're good at creating space down low on the block and getting rebounds. And also, I don't feel bad if Lindsey's the guy leading the break. Now, would I want him to do it all the time? No, but I like that ability that he has, and it allows guys like Robert Jennings as well as Warren Washington to really collapse onto the glass, get the outlet pass, and you got a guy like Lindsey that can run right down the middle of the floor and has good hands and is available to the guards like Pop, Chance, and Lamar. It also helps the guards in terms of Pop, Chance, and Lamar and what their best traits are. Lamar is getting downhill, getting to his left, and getting to the rim. Pop is creating space, going out quick, being a good passer, and shooting, right? chance he's really good at finding space and ready for the catch and shoot you've also got a guy like darion williams not to mention kerwin walton demarion williams that are good at creating space and finding those soft spots in the defense specifically in transition ready for the catch and shoot opportunity i really think that that's something that stood out to me first and foremost and this was early on in the interview that i really really drove home in terms of other videos that we have here on the channel and i think texas tech could really do that now, I obviously went over why that makes a ton of sense, but you look at what McCaslin has done. He's won in various ways, and he's talked about that, right? McCaslin has proven time and time again that he can win in various ways at different locations. Just think about this. Arkansas State has 121 regular season. McCaslin did that in year number one, ever, in program history. He is the only coach at Arkansas State to ever have 20 regular season wins, and he did that his first year. At his first year at Midland College, they went 31-3, and three, okay? You think about what he did at UNT, turning that program around, and this is not a hyperbole. He is the greatest, tech, he is the greatest men's basketball coach at UNT, period. End of story, what he's done, and he's done it in ways where early on in his tenure with the Mean Green, they scored a lot of points. Then he talked about, which we'll talk, discuss about this story a little later on here in the video, how he sent his now, well, well, his best friend in Ross Hodge, who is the now head coach for UNT, former assistant coach under Grant McCaslin there, out to West Texas. But McCaslin also said that, hey, we changed schemes multiple times at UNT, right? I mentioned that just a second ago. They scored a lot of points. They really changed the narrative the last two years because they saw what was working at a high level across high major D1 college basketball. Now, I really want to ask you guys a question before we get into more of my thoughts and the story that Grant McCaslin had about Texas Tech and him learning the defense. Do you want Texas Tech to play faster next season as the current roster stands right now? Why for yes or in for no? Again, a lot can change, but do you want... Texas Tech, as the roster currently stands right now, to play faster. Why for yes or in for no? All right. He was adamant about bringing guys in as well that fit kind of the culture. He was very, I think the word that he said the most was people. And not in the way where he was just calling people people, right? But in the sense of people were the most important aspect to him and the culture that he's building 
at Texas Tech. He wants the proper people in place to make sure that day in and day out, the right principles and core values are being taught to these guys, not only on the court, but off of it. He wants the right people in the Womble to make this program succeed. And now I know that can be frustrating to hear for some Tech fans in terms of the right people, but they take time to get in there, right? That's probably what's most frustrating is you're not just going to find the right people overnight, right? You've got to go through the process. you got to go through that those weeds a little bit to make sure that you find the right people. And that's exactly what he's doing. Funny enough, I mentioned a story earlier where Ross Hodge went out to the 806 to learn the defense from former Texas Tech head coach Mark Adams and Chris Beard when he was there um, as well. But they implemented that right away at UNT did Grant McCaslin and Ross Hodge, and that's why they became one of the best defensive teams in the country last year, top 20 in a lot of defensive metrics. They kind of flipped everything. In the first couple of years that he was there at UNT, they were a top 20, 25 offense in some metrics, right? Um, specifically shooting metrics. That flipped and changed when he saw what he had on the roster, what he was getting in recruiting, and said, okay, Maybe we don't have those prolific scores across the board like we had. Now let's shift our focus to defense. And I think that's the most encouraging sign. And the guy that was doing the interview for the field of 68 was also encouraged by that. He mentioned, hey, that's, you know, when he was uh, mentioning Grant McCaslin, that is, um, about changing schemes, he perked up a little bit, right, in terms of, hey, that's a good coach right there. That's what good coaching does, right? But I think I want to discuss this in terms of this was another quote that stood out, Um from Grant McCaslin. What we are going to do offensively will not be the same. It'll have its unique components to it. Do I think Texas Tech is going to be the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns with Steve Nash? No, I don't. Do I think they're going to be Tark from UNLV, the running Rebels? No, I don't. But I do expect Texas Tech to get out and transition a little bit more as the roster currently stands and how this is going to change in the history of Grant McCaslin in terms of how he changes year to year in terms of scheme for his team, right? That's what I expect to change. So again, my overall thoughts are this from Grant McCaslin in, in his interview with the Field of 68. First and foremost, I think his track record speaks volumes. Um, he's not the kind of guy that I feel like he brags a lot in interviews, and I don't think that that's what coaches do most of the time anyway. But it is cool to hear him from his point of view bring up hey what they did differently at each individual stop and he also had some del uh, self-deprecating humor talking about how uh, Mark Adams just um, destroyed him when he was a 27 year old coach at the community college level um, again he adjusts his roster and his scheme to the roster not otherwise okay he adjusts to his players and I think that that's what I'm most excited to see because we really didn't see that a lot last year right He's a free thinker and can coach various ways successfully, and he's proven that. But overall, it was a good interview. I highly encourage y'all to go listen to it over on the Field of 68's YouTube channel. Again, it'll be in the description as well as the comments below. But I wanted to give my thoughts on it because there were some things that really stood out. Again, the, th the line that stood out outside of him just saying people a lot was Grant saying Texas Tech will open it up more compared to last season at UNT, and I sure hope so. I would sure hope so. I got to ask you one more time, as it currently stands right now, do you want Texas Tech to run more next season? Why for yes and for no. That's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate y'all tuning in. I have RC Maxfield. If you want the latest news and rumors when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, join the fastest growing and most interactive Texas Tech community on YouTube and hit that subscribe button right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.